everybody, this is Louis from Luke Prop and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Luke Prop. Now today, we are going to go through the full financial calculation guide to buying private properties. Right? As you all know, this is a very huge topic, so we are not going to be doing it in one full video because it will be a very, very long video. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it into uh, smaller parts. So for the first part which you are watching right now, this video, we'll be going through your loan eligibility calculation. All right, how to gather your various financial information and what are the financial info that you need to be able to do your calculations effectively. So please, this is a very important video. Watch on till the end before you move on to the next two parts which we'll ask you to choose. All right, we'll give you two choices. You can take the resale direction where we'll give you the cost breakdown to buy a resale private property or we'll give you the cost breakdown for buying a new launch private property. So watch until the end of this video and let's start. So now before you even start doing your calculations, right, you have to prepare your financial figures first. So what do you have to prepare? Financial info such as your salary. Okay, and for salary, do take note, we just want your basic salary first. I'm not going to consider your bonuses, your variable bonuses whatsoever because those are variable. We want something that is, uh, you know that you'll receive on a monthly basis to have a more conservative calculation for your loan, right? Next, inside your, your CPF account right now, just within your OA account, how much do you have inside there currently? Right, because you can only use your CPF OA towards purchasing of your property. Now, if you're able to as well, take a look at what you are receiving in your OA on a monthly basis. Right, um, I won't go through in detail how you're going to search it, but just a simple one, go to your CPF website, log in, go to your uh, transaction history and look at your every month OA column, what you're receiving and have an average around there. Next is your property's outstanding loan, if any, okay? So have an idea in mind whether you are looking at it from your bank's um, outstanding loan amount or you can sign it to your HDB if you're having a HDB right now. Sign it to your HDB account and see what is your uh, outstanding loan on a HDB flat. All right, next is your CPF used. Right, for your current property plus any accrued interest. Now there will definitely be accrued interest, so please check that out before you even start your calculations because at the end of the day, it will affect how much money you get back if you are say, uh, intending to sell your property to buy your next property. And lastly, what is the cash amount that you are comfortable with coming up with? Right, when I say comfortable, please make sure that you have set aside another amount of cash in your bank as a reserve fund for any emergency use. And what you're using for the property is perfectly comfortable for you that you're willing to just put out there and just use for your property. So after you have all these figures, it'll be a lot easier for you to do your calculations. Now for today, we will be using a case study, uh, an example of what a household will look like in terms of their financial info. And I'll use this to do my next few calculations. So for the case study today, buyer A and buyer B. Buyer A is 40 years old, buyer B is 35 years old, all right? Now for the salary portion, we are having $7,000 a month for buyer A and $5,000 per month for buyer B. CPF OA currently is 150K here and about 50K on buyer B. OA monthly, we are looking at Roughly 1,200 per month for buyer A and roughly $1,000 per month for buyer B. Assuming right now that they have a joint property, right, the property outstanding loan are going to assume at 200K. For the CPF, accrued, uh, CPF used plus accrued interest, we will be using 200K as well. Right? Now for the last part, the cash portion, we are assuming that they are comfortable with putting up 50K for their next purchase. So this is the case study we'll be working with. And with that in mind, let's start our calculations. So before we begin all the calculations, let's work with some assumptions first. So the first assumptions we're gonna make is gonna be that this couple is gonna sell their property to buy their next property, which is a private condominium. 
right? The second assumption we're going to make is that they have no current other debt obligations other than their current uh, property loan, no car loans, their credit cards are fully paid every month, they don't even have credit cards, right? So all these other debt obligations we set aside, we're just looking at just mortgage. Now the third one is that, like I said earlier on, we, don't, well, we are not going to be factoring any bonuses or other variable income, right? In fact, we are just assuming that these are salaried income. Why I say that? Because uh, for self-employed personnel or anyone that's doing a freelance work, right? Um, usually there will be a 70, 30% haircut on your income and we'll be using only 70% of the total 12 months NOA towards calculating uh, your eventual loan eligibility. Now with that out of the way, let's start with the financial calculations. Now what do we start with? First thing that we're going to be starting with is their loan eligibility. Now again, I'm going to be assuming that they are buying the property, their next property jointly after selling their current property. So we will be assuming that uh, they are going to be able to take a 75% loan. So first thing that we've got to be aware is that we have to follow the total debt servicing ratio, which is your TDSR. Uh, TDSR basically states that your monthly debt obligations cannot exceed 60% of your salary. This is including your car loans, monthly credit card obligations, your personal loans, your mortgage loans, so on and so forth. On a monthly basis, cannot exceed 60% of your salary. We will also be using 3.5% interest rate Right, because although right, right now interest rates are between 1% to 1.5%, but 3.5% uh, is to make sure that you have a conservative calculation and it's also set aside a set by the government themselves. Now the maximum loan tenure for your loan is up to 30 years loan or up to an age of 65 years old. Now this is the reason why we have to calculate your income weighted average age. Right, so what is income weighted average age? Now, understanding that this is a joint purchase, whose age should you use to take the loan? Uh, what they have done is that they are going to be calculating your age, right, based on how much income each buyer has. So for this example, because their joint salary is $12,000, right, we will be using a portion of buyer A's age and a portion of buyer B's age. So how do we calculate that? Buyer A is 40 years old. They have a 7,000 salary out of that 12,000. And then we add seller B's age and a portion is their income over the overall income as well. Which should give you 37.9 and we always round up. So it should be about 38 years old. So how do we find out what's the maximum loan tenure? Very easy. You take 65 minus 35 and you will get a 27 years loan tenure. Okay, so that's the first thing we have to do. So now that we have all this information, Let's move on to calculating their maximum loan eligibility. For that, we have to use a financial calculator and also your normal calculator to calculate this. First thing we have to calculate, how much of their salary goes into their uh, loan eligibility. Now, like I said earlier on, it's 60% of their, their total uh, gross income. So out of 12,000, 60% of that would be 7,200 a month. With that in mind, we can put here 7,200. In terms of annual rate, we are using 3.5% uh, based on TDSR calculations. And also in terms of loan tenure, we're talking about 27 years, which is 324 months, which gives us a loan eligibility of up to 1.507 million. What does that all mean? Now, if your max loan is at 1.5 million, okay, and the loan tenure is actually up to 27 years. We all know that the max loan you can take for any property that you're going to purchase is up to 75% loan. This would mean that 1.5 million, if that is 75% of the purchase price, gives you a purchase price of up to $2 million. Okay. 
So this is how you calculate your maximum loan eligibility and your maximum purchase price. By no means are we saying that you should max out and buy at 2 million. This is basically what government is telling you as your maximum purchase price that you, are, you should be buying if you're getting a 75% loan. We're not saying that you should buy up to 2 million, all right? In fact, we'll be working way below that and I'll explain to you why that is the case because we are still restricted by the CPF that you have and the cash that you have, all right? So now that you know your max loan eligibility, now it's time for the calculation for your budgeting. All right, so to understand that a little bit better, let's go back and look at our previous figures to know how much we have on hand in terms of CPF, cash, so on and so forth. Now remember that I said earlier on that uh, this, in this example, the couple is going to be selling their property to buy their next upgrade of property. So let's say for example right now, we are assuming that they can sell their HDB or their current property for about 500k. Okay. How do we calculate their cash proceeds? First things first, we need to return whatever outstanding loan there is, which is 200k outstanding loan. And we have to be returning back the CPF use plus accrued interest as well, which is another 200k CPF plus accrued interest, right? And of course, other costs that comes with it. For example, uh, agent's commission, let's say you're se selling at 500k, commission is at a standard market rate of 2%, that'll be 10k. Agent com. And with that, we will be expecting about a 90k cash proceeds. Okay, so what do we know now? We know that we have about, in total, 200k that they have currently about 200k they will be getting back after selling the house and also 50k plus 90k in terms of cash for their next purchase let's jot that down so here cpf usable would be 200k that they currently have plus the 200k that they will be getting back which comes up to be 400k okay now the cash usable would be the 50k that they currently have plus the 90k of cash proceeds which gives them 140k. So this is what we are currently working with. So now that you have done up all these calculations, it's time to move on to the next part. So do you want to know the cost breakdown for a resale private property? Or do you want to know the cost breakdown for a new launch private property? Choose. See you later. Episode. Bye.